for tropical cyclones people the first thing that you must know is the favorable co conditions for tropical cyclones to form uh, again this is a very very popular um, uh, exam questions uh, questions see that you know at least three to four of these conditions that you uh, uh, for for tropical cyclones to form this is very easy firstly the sea temperature at least 26 degrees uh, celsius secondly a high humidity you need coriolis force i'm coming back to to coriolis force later on again you need unstable air rising air you need little surface friction for that reason it always uh, f uh, uh, forms over the sea you need light variable winds air pressure below 950 hectopascal and you need divergence in the upper air levels now matrix again i'm telling you this is very very easy please see that you know at least uh, 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 three to four of these conditions as i say it's a very popular exam question when they ask you name three conditions under which tropical cyclones uh, form okay now now we're going to have a look at our tropical the characteristics of tropical cyclones now matrix this is the most important part of our tropical cyclones and i'm going to present this to you on this map uh, uh, that we've got here and see if you can uh, just uh, pick up the things that you've done in the past few weeks at school with regard to the characteristics of tropical cyclones okay let's have a look at this the first thing that you must know is where tropical cyclones form now they have drawn the first day or where at uh, the place where tropical cyclones form now why do they form them they occur firstly in the tropics in the ocean and further than five degrees of the equator now if you ever look at this the most important one that 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 that, that matrix really have problem was have, is the last one further than five degrees of the equator why because these cyclones need coriolis force now what is coriolis force done coriolis force last year in grade 11 what is it it's the deflection the force responsible for the deflection of winds okay remember that now why is coriolis, uh, coriolis force so so important because for a tropical cyclone to form it needs coriolis force to set the spinning winds of a type of tropical cyclone in motion without tropical without the coriolis force this will never ever be able to happen so remember that one okay let's see what happens further here we've got the movement of our tropical cyclone it's moving from east to west very important remember our middle latitude cyclone moved from west to east please don't get mixed up what's happening now now the tropical cyclone is moving away from the equator now why does it move away from the equator matrix i want you to 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 please listen to the questions that i'm asking all the time because these are the questions that come up in the exams okay so pay attention to these questions why do they move away from the equator they can't move towards the equator because if it moves towards the equator what's going to happen no coriolis force at the uh, at the equator you see okay so it must move away from the equator because there's no coriolis course that we find at the e equator so let's see what happens further so it's still moving. moving then what's very important is that in the center of your tropical cyclone right there in the eye we've got no wind no rain and no clouds no wind no rain and no clouds just a warning matrix please please pay attention a very popular uh, pop, uh, popular question in the uh, exams is name two or name three weather conditions found in the eye and then you guys write there are no weather conditions in the eye how can that be right there's always weather conditions there's always sunshine there's always uh, winds there's always clouds there's all, there are always this temperature everything right so what you must say is there are not the following there are there's no wind there's no rain there's no clouds please not no weather conditions they're not going to give you marks for that okay let's see what happens further yeah we've still got our, our, our tropical cyclone moving now as it moves then it hits africa here and as it hits africa it causes destruction and how does it how does it cause destruction by means of storm winds torrential rain and flooding 
But there's one something that happens here. Here we've got the island of Madagascar. And you know what happens here at Madagascar? As this tropical cyclone moves over Madagascar, Madagascar actually protects Africa from these tropical cyclones. Because as it moves over Madagascar, it starts to destruct Madagascar by storm winds, torrential, uh, torrential rains and flooding. And as it uh, lands up here in the Mozambique uh, Channel, it's too, so the area is too small and the water is too cold for the cyclone really to pick up more strength, more storm, more water, more water vapor, whatever heat that it needs to really dist uh, cause destruction here. Yeah. So Madagascar is very important to Africa as it protects Africa from your tropical cyclone. So what happens next? The following movement is that it turns east at 30 degrees. And at last, as it turns east, it dissipates. Why does it dissipate? Because there's no moisture, there's no warm air, and because of friction. Now, Matrix, if you have a look at this, you see the characteristics of a tropical cyclone. It actually works in threes, right? You must know where they occur in the tropics, ocean, further than five degrees. Have you got that? You must know how it moves from west to east, away from the equator, and as it crosses the uh, 30 degrees, then it turns towards the east. You must know three characteristics of the eye. You must know how it causes destruction, and you must know um, that uh, why it dissipates. So these people, very, very important when it comes to the characteristics of tropical cyclones. Again, where do tropical cyclones form? Here we've got this blue uh, shows you the paths of the different uh, uh, tropical cyclones. And remember that tropical cyclones uh, usually um, form here in the late summer, um, summer, autumn, somewhere around there. Uh, so that is why we are in the southern uh, hemisphere uh, uh, we, we get them at different uh, dates than we get in the, in the northern uh, uh, hemisphere. Okay, now what are the weather patterns associated with your tropical cyclone? Remember we had a look at the weather patterns set, uh, uh, associated with a mid-latitude cyclone. Please don't get mixed up. Let's have a look what happens. This is the eye. This is, these, these are four graphs actually that shows what happens to the air pressure. Let's see. The air pressure drops towards the eye and then it rises again. What happens with the temperature? The temperature rises in the eyes. Actually, the only one that rises. The wind speed as it moves towards the eye, it drops again and then it increases. Then the rainfall is special, uh, exactly the same. It drops and then it increases again. Now, so what's happening here, people, is the following. Uh, before the eye moves over, over uh, um, uh, um, an area, the wind direction will be south. It will be Hurricane strength, week, uh, hurricane strength uh, uh, winds, the air pressure will start to decrease and you'll have a very, very heavy rainfall. So here you can see that before the, uh, uh, when the front part of the, of, the, of the tropical cycle hits you, you're going to have your storms and heavy rainfall and strong winds. But what happens in the eye? Look at that. No wind, no rain, no clouds. It's the lowest air pressure and the temperature increases. Very uh, important question. Why does the temperature increase in the, in the eye? That's easy. No clouds. Am I right? We've got no clouds in the eye that could cut off the energy of the sun, and so you've got an increase in air temperature. Now, after the eye, what happens when the, when the back the part of, the, of, the, of the, the tropical cyclone moves? The wind direction will be north. Again, you're going to get your very strong storm to hurricane winds. Air pressure increases. Heavy rainfall. And after that, it starts to die or to dissipate. In other words, Matrix, what happens here is that when you've got the calmness of the eye, you must still remain inside. Because when the other part, the back part of the storm actually hits you, then you're also going to get the same severe weather that you had in the front part of your front section of the storm. Okay, the tropical cyclone development is quite easy because all you have to do is to remember the number 1000. Let's have a look at that. You've got your four stages, right? The formative stage, have a look at that. Air pressure above 1,000 hectopascal. Immature, just below 1,000 uh, hectopascal. That's what you've got at 996. Mature, well below. See there, 972. And at the dissipation, or when it starts to die out, then it starts to rise again. Now, Matrix, I can't give you something more easy than that, okay? So, when they ask you, in the exams, in what stage a tro tropical cyclone is, what must you look at? I must look at the air pressure. All I have to remember is what? Thousand. Have you got that? Before, above a thousand, right? When it starts to develop, just below a thousand, right? When it's mature, far below a thousand. 
And when it starts to dissipate, it starts to rise. It's as easy as that. Okay, so remember, you have got to look at my air pressure when it comes to your tropical cyclone, in which stage it is. When I'm at my mid-latitude cyclone, then must, I must look at the size of my warm sector, right, to see in which stage I am. Uh, the middle cyclone, uh, mid latitude cyclone is. Okay, these are just a few photos that I've brought with to show you. Uh, storm winds, how they can cause damage, great swells and waves, your storm surges actually here. Yeah. And this is uh, uh, just one of flooding, just to show you how tropical cyclones, uh, these are photos actually of Katrina, uh, the, uh, a very, very huge storm that hit the US a few years ago. Now, the management of your tropical cyclone, what must you do? And this is very important. People remember that geography is a subject of management. You must know, must not only know, wow, this is a tropical cycle. This is, this, this is what happens. This is, I must know, what can I do? Right? Remember, geography is not something that you know. Geography is something that you do. So, what must I do? So, let's have a look at this. What can you, uh, what, what must I remember? Firstly, I've got my land radar here. Watch the storm and track the storm. Emergency services and rescues must be on standby. Right? Good communications. Evacuation routes, very important, just to name a few. Watch the cyclone, inform, inform the people, keep them up to date, that they can exactly know what to do, when to evacuate, and so. <coughs> Sorry for that. In order for you to minimize the amount of deaths. Okay. The tropical cyclone on synoptic weather maps, how do I recognize it? Firstly, the symbol, that's what it looks like. The name, Eileen, means that it's the fifth, A, B, C, D, E, the fifth cyclone of the, of, the, of, the, of the season. There's a low pressure in the middle. The date, please remember, from February, late February, you can ex actually expect it, late summer. Always on the east coast. Remember the, the mid-latitude cyclones on the west coast. Overcast. Right, clockwise rotation, strong winds. These are the ways in which you can actually recognize your tropical cyclones 